Hi, it's Steve and Joe from Fresh Agenda. And Steve, this week we've got a, a little something special. We're talking about not COVID-19. Yeah, not, not that. Um, <laughs> not that we don't respect or pay attention to what's happening, but we've got some other things to talk about. Yeah, we've actually um, pulled together uh, the annual summary of global dairy trade and um, just going to share some of the insights with, yeah. um, with our many, many subscribers. Yeah, so this is being mailed today mm -hmm. to subscribers. Um, I guess it's an annual, we did this last year around the same time. Uh, it's quite hard to get attention span in this uh, in this situation. So there's there's a lot of focus on, on the current crisis, but we're just pulling this up and saying, here's what happened last year. Mm. So it adds up the whole of last year's. So this is the, the full total. So we've we've looked in this at the, the full structure of supply and demand in global trade, uh, pulled out a lot of very important trends and we've sliced and diced it literally. Commodities, exporters, major market regions, um, looked at how how trends are sh you know shifting share and things like that and some things that might be relevant to next year. And it's based on the exports of the top 12 exporters and yeah. um, uh, MSE, which you'll see a lot, is uh, milk solids equivalent. So the equivalent fat and protein in all of the embodied in all the products. So mm. let's get into it, Steve. Okay, and apparently it won't take long. So some key headlines here, the, the, the big numbers, volumes of trade last year went up 3.4% in MSE terms, which is just a fraction below the year before mm -hmm. in terms of a rise. But two years in a row, it's, it's risen moderately. Yep. Value's gone up a little stronger. Um, and we valued total trade at 44 US billion in total. It rose over 5%. Uh, and incidentally, it actually reached a peak in December. So December 2019 has been the peak volume of trade across all commodities. For the 12-month period. For history. To December. Yeah, so yes. that's the annual rolling total. That's yep. right. And you can see there we've, we track, you know, the overall market share, uh, New Zealand and, uh, and Europe uh, neck and neck there at the top. So that, mm -hmm. that's the both lifted share. The US was a big loser, but you can see to the right as they peter out to the little players, um, there's quite a bit of share moved from some of those as well. Sure. Um, in terms of major commodities, um, just show that just shows where the movements have been. So we had increased sales or increased trade in most commodities. Um, some of the smaller co-products, uh, we saw some some declines. The black bars are important, and the percentage change on the right. Uh, when we look at major regions, um, pretty healthy across most, except for the MENA region. Mm. Um, and I guess Mexico also um, contracted a little, but. Um, very solid growth in absolute volumes in China as the biggest, uh, not only the biggest region in terms of volume, the biggest country growth mm. uh, as a single market. But um, you see there North America, which uh, had a strong surge in percentage terms, but they're quietened towards the end as, as trade slowed with Europe. It's um, interesting that the sub-Saharan Africa up the top mm. there, Steve, um, it's, it often gets kind of hidden in the MENA numbers mm. that we quote, but it actually had quite good growth over that period. Yeah, um, and that's I guess some of those economies getting you know having a better time with uh, with minerals, you know, mining and all you mm. know those commodities being stronger. And we did see you know quite a lot of fat fill product go into that market um, compared to the prior year, but also you know whole milk and skim both both improving. So yeah, that's um, and I guess the other one, I mean, the, the percentage changes over to the right there. The the leading one there is actually North America. Mm which is another interesting one that maybe flew under the radar. But both US and Canada yeah, in those numbers both combined. had significant inward, yeah. And lots of it from Europe. Probably. That's right, yeah. Hmm. Uh, and then we look at uh, a really interesting league table, which um, so we add up the trade into uh, individual countries mm -hmm. and separate those out, and you can see the clear away winner there, and that's, that's not a surprise, no. the size of the Chinese population and that, and that market. But down the bottom is an interesting thing, which... Whilst the UK is now a separate country, it wasn't last year, obviously buried in the European numbers, but when you strip out the UK, it's clear away the second biggest market. Yeah. Very big cheese market. Massive cheese market, yeah. Um, not a lot of, you know, change in the others. Uh, some jockeying around. The report identifies who's who's grown, who's moved up the table and mm -hmm. who's shrunk. Um, and probably one of the, the losers that stands out there is Algeria, Steve, that mm. um, they've really pulled back, um, pulled in their horns in terms of imports um, yeah. and government assistance to um, dairy so, imports. Yeah, and consumption. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we articulate quite a bit on market shares. So that's, that's both sides of supply and demand. Um, the exporter shares of commodities across, across major commodities are showing how that's shifted and 
and the report articulates those across across each major group. We also then look at these major market regions mm. and how shares have shifted. Uh, a lot of stories in this, a lot of detail as to what's going on across um, the commodity groups that's that's caused big shifts to occur there. Yeah. Um, but if you were going to generalise and looking at those blue bars there, you'd say Europe's been the busy ones again in 2019. Um, Europe's grown share with both cheese and mm, skim milk powder. Yep. Uh, and late in the year, it came back with solid growth in butterfat trade. Sure. My yeah. butter trade. So, um, so yeah. those boosted numbers on pretty low base. So that, that's that's helped them across the board. Um, and then we look at what's happened in those markets from a different perspective. What's you know what's the uh, the share of each major exporter in mm-hmm. those, and who's got what um, uh, what share? And obviously that's Europe. So they're dominant, but we we step that out across the major exporters to show and, how that how that looks. And a feature of Europe's growth is that it's been quite diversified, hasn't it, Steve? You know they haven't. I guess we'll see in the next slide, got quite the dependence of some. Yeah, nice segue. So they, they have a nice even share across. Yeah. Um, whereas if if you looked at, it, it's interesting how, um, you know, the, the mix, each each exporter's got a, a big dominant market. New Zealand, very, uh, very dependent on China, a third of trade in total volumes. And then that region with Southeast Asia, another 28%. So yeah. massive reliance on Asia, on as region. you would expect. Yeah. Given where Proximity. New Zealand is, yeah. yeah. Um, here's a really pretty chart. We break this down. So what makes up the total trade in terms of the uh, different products mm. across those groups? I mean, it's um, no surprises there, but it just shows where the weight of trade in each of those regions are and what the, what the mix is. So yeah. there's, there's many different aspects of that. And that big lump of fat-filled milk powder in um, sub-Saharan Africa, again, mm. <laughs> is, yeah. is, uh, is something that stands out. Um, but, yeah, lots of lots of insights in that pretty, very pretty chart. Not just a pretty chart. No, it's not just a pretty face. <laughs> and then uh, what's... Um, you know the makeup of global trade. What regions are more important? Southeast Asia, obviously the the largest, but um, just the growth that's occurred in China and how the Middle East and North African regions have have declined, mm, as we've said. Absolutely. So all that's articulated. Do we then have a number of interesting angles which we pull out of various parts of the package? Um, so we've just identified. You know what's what are the trade disputes done to trade flows mm. uh, as as a group of you know disputes. Mm-hmm. Um, the three big ones we talk about in there, which is US Europe. Uh, US China and Europe and Indonesia. Yep. Each had significant impacts. Uh, we profile the UK as a separate market. The uh, We did this in last year's document. Mm. Um, there's been a lot of change this year. So looking through the year when we had two Brexit false starts. Yes. There's no deal false starts. So we saw quite a gush of trade um, pr- prior to each of those. Uh, in the process, the UK has increased its cheese imports quite a bit. Mm. Um and increase its, you know, its dependence on Europe. So when we're looking at the dairy industry and its exposure to Brexit, it is huge, yes, Titanic. So, absolutely. Uh, and the report articulates the extent of that. Um, closer to home, the changing net trade in Australia. Mm. We actually valued the net trade. So Australia is still a ex- net exporter, but to the tune of only 1.3 billion litres. It's a very close run That's thing. becoming skinny. Absolutely. Um, this is one I know you like a lot mm. of. And it's the... Um, you talk about why you like it. Oh, it's interesting because it's it's not often added up this way. Um, just valuing the um, um, export mix of, of each of these major exporters. And um, it's the small silver lining for Australia. We've got less milk, but we're certainly adding more value to it. But um, just how impressive the EU is in terms of the value they manage to extract from their exports. And, and they're pretty much leaving everyone else in their way, can't they? Yeah, and the, you, even Europe lost a little bit, which is mm. the high volume of skim milk powder. I guess that that um, that pulled that up and lower prices for fat. And, mm. You know, there's a reason against last year why that changed. Um, the US did well to lift. Yep. Um, there's a bit more cheese. New Zealand would be disappointed. They actually shrank in a, in a year where unit values rose. Yeah. Um, and that's that's basically reflecting a mix that's that hasn't risen as quickly as the others and cheese would be the big factor there. You would Yeah, and it begs a question about the whole value adding proposition. But yeah. um, we could leave that for a different debate. Yeah. Um, have we set new trade records? We across commodities we look at this in terms of market regions mm-hmm. and commodity groups. Yeah. Um, quite a lot of different 
uh, patterns here, while overall we set a new record in the, at the end of the year, uh, it's, a, it's a really mixed story when you look across the regions. So a few of them, what that's basically saying, a few regions are shy of peak trade that we've seen over a 12-month period. Yeah, they have peaked and come off. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Southeast Asia being the most important one of those, I yeah. guess, in, yeah. in percentage terms. Uh, and then we also show some insights into some of the some of the impacts of rising landed costs in mm. some of these markets, where um, uh, those costs have, you know, obviously landed costs have increased and it's reduced the um, the volumes in recent months. So this is present. putting it in importing country currency. Yeah. So you can see <clears throat> what that that does on top of price any price changes, what currency movements have done. That's right. And a good pointer as to where things are, because each of these show where the futures are at the moment. Mm. So, um, it's a point as to what, we, uh, what we're seeing right now on the trade. Yep. Uh, so that's a, a, a big wrap-up of a fairly large document. Uh, as I said, it's, on the, it's in the mail to subscribers. And for other interested parties who would like to get see this video, I'm sure there are thousands going to watch it, uh, and would like to get hold of this, it'll be on our website. You can click through to a page to, uh, to receive it in the mail. or For you can free? Touch it. For free. It is yeah. free. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all from us. Um, thanks for watching. We'll be back soon.